Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Press the Action Button Podcast. I guess this probably, I'll just do what I did the last couple, and I will post this on my YouTube channel for the website, and just leave it up there. Um, As always with me is my good friend Eric, say hello. Hello, people. Um, and we wanted to do this last year, and we never got around to it because we're fucking lazy or something. And pretty much, uh, we wanted to celebrate 15 years of the PlayStation 2 because it turned 15 last year. Well, technically, we're celebrating 16 years of it, but we don't need to get into schematics. Yeah, we, we the original plan was to celebrate 15 years, and we're like closer to 16 now, yeah. I think. Yeah, it the, it launched. Let's see. Um, when did that? Oh, when did that fucker launch? I thought it was like fall of two thousand. Yeah, it was um, March. Was it was in March, right? Like March fourth. That might. I don't know if that was the Europe, European or the North American. That might have been the Japanese. But I thought it was like March, Mar- early March two thousand. I I could have sworn it was later in the year than that. Like. October, November kind of thing, but I, dude, I'd have to double check. You know in Japan, it was in March. In October, it was North America. November was in Europe. Okay, so it has. It's not quite sixteen yet, so we're still in time for fifteen. Yay! <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but, but one of the greatest systems of all time, beyond all shadow of a doubt, the library of games alone says that it's one of the greatest systems of all time. Well, I, yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ, and the fact that the last, I actually have a couple notes, surprisingly. In 2012, like, the, la, you know, the last recorded, it has sold 155 million units. Is it the best-selling system of all time, replacing its predecessor for the best-selling system ever? I don't know if it's quite the best-selling uh, the Wii U, the, or the Wii, rather, might have outdone it, but... <laughs> yeah, the Wii sold, I mean, every grandma on the block had Wii. Yeah, the PlayStation 2, well... Uh, the PlayStation 2 did one thing that got it selling shitloads right out of the gate, and that was have a DVD player. Yeah, I mean, because it was, you know, when it competed, GameCube didn't even have the, you know, inner workings for a DVD player. I know the Xbox... The Xbox did, but didn't you have to have, like, some kind of remote to get it to work? Yeah, the Xbox was weird for the DVD player, if I remember right. And I know PS2, and to be honest, like, in, in my house, we watched movies on that thing all the fucking time. It wasn't the best DVD player in the world, and still, I think that um, consoles for, like, Blu-rays and movies, I think they're still a step behind, because I still have trouble with both of them for movies, but, you know, you would have to... Once in a while, you have to fuck with it. But yeah, we watched watch DVDs on it all the time. I mean, that was a, a big thing for us. Yeah, uh, it was a big thing for me before I got my own, like, actual, like, dedicated DVD player yeah. as well. But it, it was, that was a huge deal back then, because oh, that good. was in the early days of DVD. Yeah, I mean, that was, it was, it was like the killer app. Yeah, without, without a doubt. Yeah, because the system probably didn't get a serious killer app until, what, 2001? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to read the launch titles, too, because they're pretty hilarious. And then I'll tell the story of like when I got mine. So I, was, I thought it was kind of funny. But, yeah, I know it had... Um, in, was it the last... Did it come out... It came out right after Dreamcast, right? Uh, Dreamcast was 99, it was 2000, so about a year after. Yeah, because I remember Dreamcast had a pretty solid launch, but it just, it fell by the wayside. Unfortunately, I think that was, you know, not to get off topic too much, but I thought that was such a great underrated system, but anyway. Yeah, I love the Dreamcast, too. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk I, about that someday, but. Yeah, we'll have some retrospectives and episodes. It was a fantastic system, but anyway, yeah, the, the PS2 came out and just, like, took over, you know, and was it? I think it was also was it the last console that launched with a memory card slot? Uh, no. GameCube launched after it. GameCube was after and had the memory card. Okay, I know. I don't know. I know that's not a big deal, but I always thought it was kind of funny, you know, for the 
memory cards when they kind of went away, which I kind of miss them, but... Yeah, it was easier to transfer your save games with that. Although I suppose you could probably put your save games nowadays on a uh, memory stick duo or something like that. Yeah, it's just not the same. I always loved like plugging in the official Sony memory card and the logo on it and shit, just like the whole the feel of it. But yeah, so the PS2. Did you get yours on launch? No, I did not. I got mine around the time Metal Gear Solid Two came out. Oh, so good so good yeah one of the best games on the systems and it wasn't even it was one of the best games on the systems while not being the best Metal Gear on the system right because Metal Gear Solid 3 was even better but anyway you were going to tell a story about the end so, mentioned launch games yeah the, when um I pre-ordered because the, when the, the first PlayStation I didn't get on launch in fact to just back step a little bit with my Sony my PlayStation Club or whatever. I went to. Um, I used to go over to my friend's house, and I didn't have. I didn't have much money. He had a. He had a, the first PlayStation, and I would play Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, and just was like, you know, in love with it or whatever. But I couldn't afford a PlayStation. And I remember, I had did some work around town, you know, like mowing lawns and just different shit like that. And I saved up money, and at the time, I was like super into samurai swords, right? Yeah. And so I went to the mall because I remember they had a at the the mall where I lived, Capitol Mall. They had a, like a martial arts store. Yeah. And they had these samurai swords, and they had one that looked like the Highlander katana. So I went in there, and I had, and the the, the PlayStation might even been discounted at this point. This is how late I got, I got the PlayStation a little bit later, but I love that thing. But anyway, I went in. I was gonna buy this sword. I was with my mom, and like I remember looking at it, it had a big chip on the handle. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm not going to spend my money on this, right? Mm-hmm. So we went walking around, and there was a store called EB Games. Oh, I miss EB Games. Oh, God, me too. I, I used to get X-Men figures there like a fiend because they would discount them. But I walked in, and along the top behind the register were just boxes of play, Sony, Sony PlayStation, the first one. And I was like... I wasn't even didn't even know if I was going to spend my money, and I walked in, and it just hit me like, why the fuck don't I? Am, wasn't I going to get this in the first place? So I remember like, just right there on the spot, you know, getting the PlayStation. I got Need for Speed Hot Pursuit game that I loved, and I went home. My brother was like, "Oh, did you get your Samurai Sword?" And I had a big bag, and I pulled it out. I'm like, "No, something much better." So then we were just obsessed from that point on. But the PS2, which. I, I don't know why it's Samurai Sword to Sony, but the PS2, I remember I reserved, and I actually reserved two copies of it, mm-hmm. because I know, like, you know, I always was nervous about a launch system or whatever, and I didn't want to fucked up one. So, Which is still a good thing to live by. Exactly, yeah, you still gotta kind of wonder. And, um, so I got, you know, I worked at Arby's at the time, so me... And a couple other guys, we we uh, reserved it. I reserved it at Best Buy and Toys R Us, so we decided to camp out overnight at Best Buy. Huge line. The route outside all night long. We had, um, and they let us in. It, like, <laughs> sorry about that. Still there? Yeah. Yeah, my phone started ringing. I had to get rid of it real quick. But anyway, Best Buy let us in early before the system went on sale and said you can get the games for it. Mm-hmm. And you can get your controller. So we had chairs, and I went in, and here's the launch. I'm going to read the launch lineup, and then I'm going to tell you what exact games I got. So its U.S. launch was October 26 of 2000. Here's the full launch lineup for North America. Armored Core 2, DOA 2 Hardcore, Dynasty Warriors 2, ESPN International Track and Field, ESPN Winter X Games Snowboarding, Eternal Ring, Ever Grace, Phantom Vision, Gun Griffin Blaze, Madden NFL 2001, Midnight Club Street Racing, NHL 2001, Orphan Scion of Sorcery, or the fuck that was, Q Ball Billard's Master Cheese, Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2, Ridge Racer 5, Silent Scope, Smuggler's Run, SSX, Street Fighter, Summoner, Swing Away Golf, Tekken Tag Tournament, Time Splitters, Unreal Tournament, Wild Wild Racing, and X Squad. Terrible, terrible launch lineup. Yep. <laughs> One of the worst in history. 
How many of those games do people even remember? I, I know. And this is the word. This here's the ones I bought. And I'm gonna start at the top. Dynasty Warriors 2, Midnight Club Street Racing, Ready to Rumble Boxing 2, Smuggler's Run, SSX, Summoner, Tekken Tag, and Time Splitter. So I bought eight fucking games for this thing. The amount of money I've spent that day. God damn. Yeah, I had saved up paycheck after paycheck. And beyond the way, I didn't even, at the time, I wasn't even thinking about, like, I had saved up that much money. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted, like, launch games but most of them other I think Midnight Club was kind of fun and Ready to Rumble and SSX were the best ones but um, Time Splitters was short Tech and Tag was there and Summoner was one of the worst games I've ever played in my life I think I've got the PC version of that somewhere right, right. oh I mean, it was abysmal so I had all these games and then like they let us in and in fact even later we left and one of the guys watched our space, and we went to Arby's, and and because uh, my friend was the manager, so we opened it up and made a bunch of food, and then came back. It was like late as fuck in the morning, you know, or at mm-hmm. night. And anyway, I get home and go to sleep, and I wake up early. I get everything hooked up, and my PS2 didn't fucking work. Oh, that sucks. Yep, and like I'm just sitting there, nothing would work. It wouldn't recognize anything. I'm calling the number, and then I remembered, oh shit, I reserved two. So I call Toys R Us, and they're like, yeah, we still have your, we still have yours. I return the Best Buy one, get my money back for that system, go across the fucking street to Toys R Us, get that PS2, and leave, and then that one worked perfectly, and I never had a problem with it. Ah. Really? You, you know, like, do you still have that launch one, or? Yeah, oh yeah. It still works. Oh yeah. So it didn't it never started giving you the the uh, uh, DVD drive problems that were fairly common with it. You know what it did for like a little bit, and then it would it would work fine for like a long time, and then you would have like a week or two where it was like sketchy. You know what I mean? Yeah, my original PlayStation two, and I've got the Slimline one now. I've actually oh, yeah. had a couple of them. Yeah. My original PlayStation 2, which I sold when I got a PlayStation 3, which was a mistake. But I, I had a PlayStation 3 that could play PlayStation 2 games, so I wasn't worried about it, but it was still a mistake. Um, it eventually got to the point where I had to, like, sit there for a few minutes while it recognized the damn discs. Oh my god, yeah. Which was annoying. You would put them in and turn it on, and it would just sit there for a while. But I, I remember wanting one at launch and not yeah. having enough money to get one. I was in like seven, no, ninth or tenth grade at the time, probably. Um, God, no, eight or nine, something like that. I don't remember exactly. It was too long ago. You know, I I graduated the same month this came out. So it was like, I was like, hello, world. Like, what am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to play PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> I was in ninth or 10th grade, so I didn't have a job at the time. Right. So I was limited on funds. And I don't think I got one until I got one for my... Did I get it for my birthday? Do you remember what year you got yours? 2001. Did you? Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, I got it around the time that Metal Gear Solid 2 came out because I needed that fucking game. And it was worth it. Just like everybody else, I was like, well, who the fuck is this Raiden pussy? But it was still a good game. I'm one of the few that I I thought thought Raiden was fucking awesome. I I, I love... I love that game that, I mean, I could play it today and play through it and just be perfectly happy. It is a great game. It really is. I was so excited for that game that I remember I helped my dad. um, He had bought, I remember what he, he bought like an appliance or whatever. We, you know, unloaded and everything and took us a little bit to get it hooked up. And so he said, you know, for helping, I could pick out a game. We'd go to Best Buy and get a video game. 
mm-hmm. and Zone of the Enders had just came out and it had the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo. Which was the tanker mission, if I remember right. Yeah, it was. And that's literally the only fucking reason I got Zone of the Enders was to get the Metal Gear demo. But then I ended up loving that game. So was, I was going to say, Zone of the Enders wasn't bad, though. No, I started, I played the I played the Metal Gear demo, I think, like two weeks straight. I played it every fucking night. This is no lie. Like, every single night I played that demo for two weeks. And then I'm like, okay, well, I've, like, over and over and over and over and over again. So I was like, I might as well actually play the game that I got. So I put Zone of the Enders on. I was like, oh man, this shit's pretty fun. Yeah. I played Zone of the Enders too. I I had a copy of the second one and the damn disc was scratched. So I never got to play two. Yeah. But I did play the first Zone of the Enders and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, Metal Gear Solid was better, but I'm also a Metal Gear Solid fanboy. <laughs> oh, I man. would. I will admit to that. Um, I don't know if you remember when they announced the PlayStation 2. Didn't they announce like some kind of what, what do they call it? The Emotion Engine or something? Yeah. Uh, and they said it would have uh, graphics on the level of Toy Story. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> that never manifested. <laughs> no, that's. I mean, Jesus Christ! It's one of Peter Moore might as well have announced that one. Yeah, but that's kind of what the, happens with all new consoles is we're going to oversell the shit out of this thing and you're going to love it and buy it and then you're going to love it anyway yeah. even though we oversold it. I think one of the, the biggest features on the PS2 also it was it, you could play PlayStation games on it. Yeah, the backwards compatibility yeah. was awesome. And PlayStation has a fantastic lineup. Yeah, so the moment you bought it you had access to a huge library. Like, even if I mean, you bought it at launch, you had an access to hundreds of games instantly. That's kind of where. And then I love I love the PlayStation. I mean, I love all consoles, but at the same time, like fuck you guys, because you could do that now, and you, you're just fucking with us, and you won't do it. Yeah, it pisses it. It annoys me that Sony's not adding it backwards. At least add it for PlayStation Three games. Come on. I know it's just it, it's infuriating, but anyway, yeah, you could you had like buying a PlayStation Two was like getting two consoles for one plus a DVD player. I it was I mean it was one of the last great great deals. And because now it's like okay, well you know it's going to come with this, you know it's going to come with a, a Blu-ray player, but then it's like oh PS4, you can't play PlayStation Three games on it, you know it's yeah and. That was back when backwards compatibility was still kind of a novelty concept. Like, oh, this could play old games? That's fucking amazing! Yeah. It was a huge... And it was a big selling point for the system. Now, the PlayStation 2 was also innovative in some other ways. It was, I believe, the first console that could render games in uh, resolutions above 640 by 480 because it could do progressive scan. It didn't have very many games that right. played in progressive scan, but it could do it. Correct yeah. me if... Uh, Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I'm not trying to interrupt you. Oh, no, you're fine. Go ahead. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't there one game on the PlayStation 2 that could play in HD? Yeah, there was um, Gran Turismo 4 would support upscale to 1080. Yeah, I was going to say Gran Turismo 4, I think, would do 1080. Yeah, and I know there was another one, and it was like a, a weird one. Which, God, that game was so fucking gorgeous when it came out. Yeah, it's it's funny, because like, if you look at it now, and compare it to one of the new ones, like it, it's like, really? But God, I remember fucking putting that game on and looking at it, and just was like, Holy shit, you know? Yeah, that that one blew us all away. The How good God of War looked blew us all away. God of War, yes, and amazing. It actually still looks good, which I don't know how they did it with that game, but goddamn. Yeah, you just get the PlayStation 3 version of it, and it's still gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, it's a great-looking game. And God of War 2 looked a little bit better than God of War 1, and... God, that had so many great games. Uh, but yeah, they definitely overpromised on the looks like 
uh, Toy Story thing. But there were some very good looking games for There it. were, but I think, and I even getting into it, like the games were so good and drew you in so much that I think time, you know, you would be playing them and they might have looked better than you even realized they they looked just because you were so into it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I still, like, I, I think about playing that Metal Gear, you know, Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty and just like feeling like I was living in that world just because I played it so much, but not the best looking game ever, but god damn. Yeah, um, the PlayStation 2 was the first to be first console to be able to hook to be able to hook up through component cables, which was a huge deal because yeah. when the PlayStation 2 came out, component cables were still expensive as hell. So getting that was a huge deal. You still there? Yeah, I was just listening to you. Uh, it was uh, that th- really improved the color of it, and that that's kind of a good thing nowadays because, if I'm being completely honest, the video output on the PlayStation Two was not very good. It output in right. most of the time, it output in fairly low resolutions, and it was kind of blurry. But we all played it on. So that was weird, but <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we all played it on TVs that were fairly low resolution and kind of blurry because we all had tube TVs back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I had it hooked up. We had a smaller TV that was just pretty much we played games on. It was a tube, you know, and uh, we had it hooked up on there and didn't have, you know, even that, that TV was not the best at all, but it was perfect for what I needed. Yeah. It, a little bit of a problem does come into play in hooking it up to modern TVs because a lot of the games on the PlayStation 2 really don't look that good on modern TVs. Right. They look fuzzy, which is unfortunate, but that's just because this was... I mean, the, the output on the PlayStation 2 was never all that good to begin with, so it's not going to look that sharp to be on modern TVs. It just kind of uh, brings out that problem. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's one of those things, like, I'm trying to, I'm getting, I think I told you this, I'm getting into more collecting. Yeah. So I'm trying to go back, and I have a tube TV that, it's at my mom's, I just need to get it, and that's what I'm going to hook up the older systems on, just because I love the experience of playing it on a, um, I don't, I don't know why, like, I don't want to hook up an old system on the new, you know, flat screen HD, just, I don't know, it defeats purpose for me, but. Yeah, unless you're playing a play—I mean, unless you're playing a PlayStation Two game that'll do progressive scan, it's not going to look very good on. Uh... Yeah, and, and it's just like the the whole feel of it, like playing that, you know, on a flat screen. There's, I don't know. There's, there's something about that two TV and just like the the fuzz on the screen and <coughs> really, really nostalgic. Uh, something a lot of people don't think about but it was pretty innovative for the system is it was the first video game system to be able to have a hard drive plugged into it right it didn't come yeah. standard with a hard drive but you could get one for it yeah you could get you could get a um, you could get one for it and then the memory card was 8 gigabytes that it came with Yeah, um, there was what one? Was Final Fantasy XI the only game that used that? For which one? Was Final Fantasy XI the only P- PS2 game that used a hard drive? I think so. Yeah. I don't even think the PS2 servers for that are up anymore. No, I wouldn't think so. I mean, there's yeah, there's no way, no way. So unless you're uh, looking to put Linux on your PlayStation 2 for some strange reason, which you can do, um, yeah. there's no real reason to get a hard drive for it. No, I never, ever felt like I needed one. And, and it wasn't even till 
probably when I got my PS3 that I even found out that you could have got a hard drive for it. I didn't know. I didn't really give a shit. It wasn't like now where they always ship one with less memory than what they should. You're like, oh, fuck, I need to get one. Yeah, I'm basically out of spec. I don't have enough room on my PlayStation 4 for all the PlayStation 4 games that I buy. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, let's see, what else? Um, but there was, so, there was like, you know, I think everybody had, like, a handful of knockoff memory cards because they had bigger ones. Yeah, you, you would have the memory cards where you would have to press the button to switch between, like, four different modes or whatever. What was the fucking... There was, like, a company... God damn, I, I, I wish I could remember the name. Maybe, like, it was Game something. They have, like, a goofy little logo, and they, they released a lot of, like, third-party stuff for the, uh, the PlayStation 2. I know they had, um, like, a game code thing to plug into it, and those, those were, like, knockoff uh, Game Shark? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Did they do memory cards too? I don't know if Game Shark did memory cards. I know they did the code things. Yeah, I love that thing, by the way. God damn, I miss those. I had one for the for the Nintendo 64 that was awesome. It was, I mean, it was basically the exact same thing as the Game Genie. So if you guys don't yeah. remember it, surely you remember the Game Genie. Oh, yeah, for sure. It was basically the exact same thing as that, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, Game Shark was great. You know, you plug it in, you had just like a ridiculous amount of games. Yeah, and you had like good input, cheat codes for them, and update them with new cheat codes and all kinds of crap. Yeah, they were, they were so fun. Yeah, I never really had one for the PlayStation 2, though. Which is. Kind of unfortunate, I guess, but what can you do? Right, yeah, I mean, I think PS2 was probably, I, I don't know, the end of cheat codes, mostly, to, if you think about it. You know, Which is unfortunate. Yeah, because developers, developers don't really put them in games much anymore at all. I don't get that. Like, okay, I want to beat your game without cheating, but after I beat your game without cheating, I'm going to turn on cheat codes and fuck around. Let oh, yeah, do I that. like... The ones that still do it, or, you know, Rockstar do, still does it with the Grand Theft Auto series, and it's, it's hilariously fun because they have some really great ones. You know, yeah, you beat the game and then go back, and you got all these fucking really fun codes you can put in. And dick Let around. me spawn a tank right in the middle of the street. <laughs> yeah, and then you can spawn like twelve of them and then blow them all up. It's fucking hilarious. But yeah, I love it. Speaking of Grand Theft Auto, wow, I found the PC version of San Andreas the other day for two bucks. Oh, that's that's a steal. Yeah, it had the original map and the book and everything with it. I was like, oh, that is so cool. Oh my god, I remember and funny, funny tid or good tidbit that you mentioned San Andreas. That's actually the best selling PlayStation 2 game of all time. I wouldn't have guessed San Andreas, but it, it's not that big of a surprise. So my favorite Grand Theft Auto actually was Vice City. I loved Vice. I loved oh man Vice City. I, I loved the death. I think my favorite one, San Andreas, just because it was it was it still is huge. I mean Jesus Christ, but you know when you first get to like San Francisco or whatever the, whatever they call it, the game or whatever, it's so cool. I remember getting that game and like the the guy to GameStop unlocked it, and coming home and playing, and so happy. Yeah, and Vice City was fantastic. Though. Yeah, both of them were. Um... Three was really good too. Love three. People three, forget yeah. about three. It wasn't PS One, was it? No, one and one, two, and London were PS One. Right. Okay. P and three was PS PS Two. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> okay, I muted the ringer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, three was awesome. I I remember like. I would play that game every single day, and not even like it, not even a, a joke. It was literally every day in the winter. That was like my winter game. But I would, yeah. I would always start it over, and every each year I would start it over in the winter and just play it, play it, play it, play it. And that was back before we had huge expectations or did really. I mean, 
Grand Theft Auto was... It's hard to imagine a time when Grand Theft Auto wasn't a big series nowadays. Yeah. But when that game came out, it wasn't. Yeah, I know. I think it was like the... Um, it was such a great time because, you know, now it's like, Jesus Christ, you can see everything before it comes out, which it's such a double-edged sword because you can get excited for something, watch gameplay videos, but man, then it's like... You didn't know what to fucking expect, you know? Yeah, it's a double as where you get excited for something, watch gameplay videos, and then it turns out to be Aliens Colonial Marines. Yeah, or it's like <laughs> you watch so many gameplay videos and then you play the game and you're like, oh, I remember this part of the video, I remember this, I remember that. Yeah, they told me this was going to be in there. There's there's too much of that. Yeah. Which I'm trying to get away from reading and, and, reading and watching as much game stuff. It's kind of hard because a couple of them I'm really excited about, so I keep watching shit about them. But... Yeah. And they're doing that with movies nowadays, too. And it's kind of sad. All right. Well, that was really goddamn annoying. <laughs> a little power outage. Yeah, my power shut off and cut off Eric mid-sentence. Yeah, I was, gee, I was trying to even think what I was talking Oh, I think I was talking about... You, the last thing you said was with what we have now and the internet access we have now. So if right. that helps... Yeah, so basically what I was saying is when Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty came out, if we had today's technology, you know, in, in the access to the internet, you would have known well ahead of time about the Switch halfway through that game. Mm-hmm. So, the, you know, people playing it, myself included, when that happened, was blown away. But now it's like, yeah, you would have fucking known. There's no way. Yeah. I hate when developers straight up tell you about twists like that, and... I'm going to bring up an example that's not from the PlayStation 2 and is a shitty game that everybody forgot about because it's a shitty game. But hey, the, the developers in every single developer video for that was like, yeah, you switch sides about halfway through this game. I'm like, no, don't yeah, tell me that. I remember, I remember that. Don't tell me that. I hate it when developers do that. And you didn't get that back in the PlayStation 2 days. Right. It'd be like, you hear a game about three months before it comes out, and then it's out. Yeah. It was... I love not knowing. And, like, yeah, we get game magazines, but... It was, I think it was better, you know? Yeah, we would be more surprised when uh, newer games would come out. Yeah, you'd be more surprised. You didn't, you didn't already have such a preconceived notion of what you were getting into. And... Uh, hmm? Here's an important PlayStation 2 question that everyone should ask themselves in this. Do you have it vertical or horizontal? I had it standing up, vertical. Yeah, that's the way to go. That's what I did. That stand was awesome. Except for the uh, slim lines, which you kind of had to lay down, but yeah. they're so tiny that who cares? Yeah, for sure. That's what I've got now is a slim line. And I'll tell you another thing is uh, they didn't, they went the right route with the controller on that one because they had basically perfected controller design in the eyes of many many people when they did the um, the uh, dual shock for the PlayStation 1 yeah. in like 98 and they said you know what we're just going to make cosmetic improvements to this we're going to give you like more pressure sensitive buttons and more levels of vibration and that's it <laughs> i can't decide if that's my favorite um, controller I, I, I personally love the GameCube controller a lot, so I always go back and forth on those two, but... Uh, I thought you went back and forth between that and uh, the Xbox. The 360, I think, it's, it's fantastic. I really like the Xbox S controller for the original, the uh, the smaller one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like... Just... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I remember in, like, I, I, I saw one of the games recently and I was like, oh, I forgot how great of a controller that was. It really was. But we're not here to talk about Xbox, but the PlayStation 2 right. really did have a great controller. I loved yeah. it a lot. DualShock, DualShock 2 was such, you know, like, um, I, I told you launch games that I got one of them, Smuggler's Run. I also bought two controllers, and so 
the day, that night, you know, I was playing, me and my brother were playing Smuggler's Run, which is a very early Rockstar, it was Rockstar produced game. And, Back before uh, they were a huge name. Yeah. And I got so fucking mad that I took my PS2 controller fucking on launch day and spiked it fucking Emmett Smith style right off the floor, hardwood floor, and the, um, the R2 button popped off. And it went flying, and I couldn't fucking find it. And so I took the R2 button off my DualShock, my PlayStation 1, and, and put it on there. Did it work? Perfectly, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that- I got to say, oh my god, I hated that game, but yeah, anyway. I remember playing Smuggler's Run, and I remember nothing else about the game except that I played it. Oh, it was fucking awful. Wasn't it like you're a, you're running from the cops and trying to deliver drugs over a border or something? Yeah. Yeah, and you could two-player it, and like, yeah, you, know, you could be rivals and shit, and then you would try and, you know, chase each other down and ram each other's cars and shit, and try and get away from the cops. It, it sounds like it would be fun, but it, it is not. <laughs> yeah, don't you just hate like this? Sounds like an awesome game. How the hell did they screw it up so when I, bad? Like, when I was in when I was in Best Buy, and like I read the back of Summoner, and I love role playing games. And the PS One and the PS Two were, I think, the best consoles ever for role playing games. I would have to agree. And um, because they released so many Japanese ones on it, they for some reason at the time they just didn't care to release them over here whenever they fucking wanted. Yeah, now they don't really. They have. They didn't really do that for PlayStation Three or Four. No, they kind of unfortunate. The PS2 was the last great golden era of RPG. Although the PlayStation during the PlayStation Three era, Western RPGs really stepped up their game. They did, but I, I'm I'm talking about the straight the Japanese RPGs. Yeah, they would release on the PS2 over here with literally no hype. I mean, you could go in the store and there would be a new one. You know. Yeah, I remember getting one that was called the Eternal Poison, oh, and remember. nobody has ever fucking heard of Eternal Poison except for you. <laughs> remember Legend of Dragoon? Yeah, I have that for the PlayStation like, One. It was awesome. Fucking four discs or whatever that goddamn thing was. Yeah, I remember it. It was great. Uh, Legend of Lagaya. Nobody remembers that one. It was oh, that's great. Such a good game. But yeah, they were they would release those and like, oh, it was so fucking sweet. And there were ungodly amounts of them, and it, it, there are too many. Like, there were some that got some recognition and praise, like Shadow Warrior and yeah. Shin Megami Tensei on the PlayStation three or two, rather. But there were so many of them that people just don't remember. Yeah, there were. Oh, there were so many. Like, and I would because I, I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't have bills or whatever. I mean, I lived at home. And so I fucking would just buy those things like crazy. And I uh, love RPGs, especially the Japanese ones. So I would buy each week. I mean, goddamn, I probably bought for a year a game a week. I whatever would come out, I would just go out and get because I love wrestling games. And they, you know, WWF and WCW would always release games for that fucking thing. So I'd be buying those and. I had so many PS2 games. The most games I've ever had for any console. Usually. Yeah. I had an ungodly amount of them as well. Probably 40, 50, something like that. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. so goddamn many. And yeah, it was ridiculous. Love the system to death. Uh, did We haven't even mentioned the online aspect of the PlayStation 2 yet. Because it did I, have... it. Uh, I don't think it got online capabilities until a year or two after, and they had to, uh, because it didn't launch with an online thing, and then they had to get make the peripheral that lets you connect it to your broadband, yeah. internet, or whatever. Did you ever play online on PlayStation 2? I did. Um, I'm trying to remember what game, and because... It was free to play on, right? Yeah, it was free to play, which was cool. Yeah, I and I know that I didn't do it a lot, and because um, you had to have the uh, 
uh, PlayStation ne- PlayStation Network adapter. Yeah, and which remember- later actually came attached to the system when they did the slim line. It was built in. Yeah, but with, you know, Mr. Launch Day, like I was, I, ha- I had to go out and buy that thing. Because I know Final Fantasy XI was the last one. And that actually... I'm going to let me look here, because I... When we said about that being shut down. You know when that the servers for Final Fantasy XI was shut down? I couldn't tell you off the top this of my head. This is fucking hysterical. March 31st of 2016. This year? Yeah. I didn't know they were shut down this year. Damn. The official server was for Final Fantasy XI. It was ultimately shut down on March 31st, 2016. That is amazing. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I wonder if anybody did with that what uh, when the servers for uh, Xbox Live got shut down for the original Xbox. Right. They had a large group of people that were just refused to sign out of their Xbox and so they could keep a Halo 2 server up because the Halo 2 server would not yeah. shut down until the last person had logged out and they kept that server going for like a week and a half yeah. after they shut down which is amazing I wonder if anybody did that for that maybe I don't, yeah maybe I don't know I know it didn't have there weren't really a lot of games they would do online I thought most of them were sports games but I remember um there were a few shooters, though. Yeah, like the Call of Duty. First, I remember Twisted Metal. Was it which was it Twisted Metal Black? Yeah, Black that, was awesome. Yeah, it was. That was Hard really as cool. hell, though. Yeah, I played that. Uh, SOCOM, one of the SOCOM ones I played. Like I played that one online a little bit. Um, yeah, I played SOCOM online too. I know there was a. a God damn, there was like a Japanese Resident Evil. Uh, outbreak. Yeah, 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 that's right. It was Outbreak File 1 and 2, which, yeah. for some, they let you play online, and for some reason, they did not let you use voice chat, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it made no fucking sense. And the other one was, uh, I know Midnight Club, one of the, one or two of the Midnight Clubs you could play online, but I didn't really, because I, I still, to this day, I don't like, I don't really like sports games, except I... I like NFL Blitz because you could like do steroids and shit. But yeah, NFL Blitz was cool. Uh, NBA Jam was cool too. Yeah, and I and I consider I love wrestling games, but to me they're fighting games, so I don't really consider them sports games. Yeah, I never really got the sports games either, and that was kind of where most of the online on it laid. But I did play quite a bit of Killzone online. Yeah, which was actually pretty fun. Um, it wasn't the first system that allowed you to get online. I think that was the Saturn. Yeah, you might be right. I would have to look it up, but yeah, you might you might be right. Because I know the uh, Dreamcast had online straight out of the gate, but it wasn't the first one to allow you to log in online. Yeah. And we'll have we'll definitely have to do a Dreamcast project. I played the you shit know, out of Quake Three online on that system. I know just to like jump off real quick, but we're gonna do a Nintendo, and I want to do a Sega, and then I also want to do a full Sony. Like I know we've been kind of jumping back and forth, but there's so much for each one, even even Xbox. Because I, I love the shit out of the Xbox. Yeah, I could do an Xbox Xbox 360. I have no experience with the Xbox One though, so yeah. it's fantastic. But I'm kind of having a little bit of trouble with mine at the moment, so I'm a little pissed off. Ah, uh, that sucks. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is, but anyway, that's a another story but yeah the, um the ps2 was like i remember because like i was getting a little bit older too and you know i just graduated high school so that was like i don't know almost felt like my first adult console you know what i mean like yeah that's where i i, I mean i played games i've been playing games my entire life you know from atari and, and up but the ps2 was the one to where it was like I really took it to like the next level of series to where I was just fucking obsessed. Yeah, I played a lot of the PlayStation 1, but I think I played even more PlayStation 2, even though the PlayStation 1 is probably my favorite console of all time. I, but, I, oh. 
I, th- I mean, me and my brother, we played PlayStation 1 so much. I, I told a story when I got it, but the PS2 was just like, I mean, I can't remember. It's, it's weird, but I can barely remember a day going by where I didn't have it on at some point just playing, which really bums me out because I don't really, I don't get even close to that time in game now. But like, God damn it, that fucking system, I was just glued to. It was crazy. I, I loved it so fucking much. There yeah. so many games. And like, and not to sound like bragging or sound like a dick, but I had I had access to more games than a lot of people just because of the fact that I didn't really have I you know, I had no bills that I was paying. All the money that I made and I worked, you know, I made fairly decent. I just put into fucking dicking around, you know, which obviously wasn't the smartest move I've ever made, but fuck it. Yeah, you know, I I would just buy games, so I like I had so many I could play. Yeah, um, I think it was the PlayStation Two era when I met you, wasn't it? Yeah, that yeah, I would yeah for sure. God damn, I've known you for a long fucking time. Jesus Christ, it's been many years now. Which it was on the Megadeth forums. Yeah, I know, right? Like, back in the day. And we always, uh, it was always, uh, I started, I think it was, uh, I started it, I think. I just started a thread discussing role-playing games. Yeah, I'm trying, it was RPG something. And I remember there were, like, I remember seeing it and, like, being someone who loves role-playing games, I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And then there was a couple people who would post on there, but I didn't really like them. Then there was that one kid who would post in a lot, but I remember we would just talk, you know, in message boards all night long. Yeah, it was uh, me, you, and I think the third guy went by the name Grinder, Griever, Griever. That's Griever. it. Yeah, you remember? Remember a few years ago we found it was a few years ago, but we found like what happened to that kid when he became like that weird goth kid. But... Yeah. Good luck to him, though. I mean, he was—he wasn't a bad guy. We made fun of him a lot, but he wasn't a bad guy. Yeah, he was—he was a nice kid. Yeah, that's we—we we met on there and talked about PlayStation, you know, games, fucking endlessly. Yeah, I remember him. You remember <laughs> his stink palm story? <laughs> I do remember. Him. <laughs> he got stink palm by a hobo. <laughs> oh shit. Good time. God damn, yeah, that was fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was a long time ago. God damn. Uh, but yeah, that, that was how I met you, was on the Megadev forums and Just talking about more than 10 years later, we're still friends. Yeah, no, it's crazy. That's the power of having at least two things in common. Heavy met well, at least three things in common. Heavy metal, video games, baseball. Yeah, in uh, yeah, quite a few other things. But I remember right too. I mean, beer, sexy women. <laughs> yeah, Simpsons quotes to no end. Yeah, and the Simpsons. Yeah, I, I, god damn, that takes me back thinking about talking about role playing games all night on that damn website. Yeah, we really did. I I remember I was when I created that thread I was playing Chrono Trigger at the time yeah and I, I remember talking to you about Chrono Cross because of how much I liked it I still was never a big into Chrono Cross it uh, just, the characters just never set with me you know what it was for me it's like I played that more than I did Chrono Trigger but when I got Chrono Cross because I, I uh, reserved it and I reserved it at GameStop and, and it came with the official soundtrack a book and it came with like an old school alarm clock, which was awesome. So yeah. I think just the whole aesthetic of everything. So I remember like listening to the soundtrack, which was one of the best game soundtracks ever fucking created. I can't deny that the soundtrack was gorgeous. Oh, so was Chrono Trigger. Yeah, they were both. It was like it was like a tropical classical. It was so fucking beautiful. I would listen to that soundtrack today, and be perfectly happy. But yeah, I'm, so. It was just everything about like the experience of getting that game, and then when I started it, I was I was so into it. But yeah, I, I remember because I had my my TV for me and my brother. Well, I think it was it was actually my brother's TV. But he had the PS2 hooked up to it, and it was right next to the computer. So I would be sitting there chatting about role playing games on, with you, 
while I was also sitting there playing the PlayStation, so that was pretty much... As you can imagine, I was not going out on a lot of dates at the time. <laughs> no. I think that was pretty obvious by the previous statement of, you know... <laughs> hey, it was fun, though. Oh, God, yeah. I, I, it was a great time. Just sitting there all night, not really giving two shits about much. You know, sitting there playing games all night, and, you know, chatting about it. Yeah, it's something you kind of look back on and kind of miss from time to time. Oh, yeah, I still miss it. I for sure still miss it. Kind of wish you could just sit there and have days where you just do nothing but play video games. And then adult responsibilities kind of smack you in the face. And you go, God damn it, I got to do this other crap. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. I, 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 oh, I barely get to play. And I'm trying to change it, but... Yeah, for a while I haven't really got to play much. It's, it's been uh, I I didn't even got that far in Uncharted, and then No Man's Sky comes out next week, and I'm gonna get it. So it's like I'm going to literally get a game. It's endless, and I don't have time to play games. Yeah, uh, God, I haven't gotten Uncharted yet. But Naughty Dog was huge on the PlayStation Two as well. They had a uh, Jack and Daxter series on that, which was a big deal. Jack started on there. Ratchet and Clank started on uh, PS2. Yeah, it was like, it was really kind of like the la- the end of the golden age of the 3D platformer, which really is kind was. of sad because you don't yeah. see that many of them anymore. It definitely was. I, it, it is. It's very, very depressing. Because was- I love a good 3D platformer. Yeah, I mean... Me too. It, PS2 was kind of the the end of a golden era of a couple different. I mean, like we were talking about, the, just like the endless stream of fantastic Japanese role playing games that would come out over here. And it was the end of the golden era for that too. Yeah, so many developers were more willing to take a chance on games with the PS2 than they are nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like they're so scared that if they release a game, it gets like one bad Metacritic score and they're fucking filing for bankruptcy the next day you know it just seemed like back then you know they would put out a game if they if they believed in it no matter what that fucking game was coming out you know? yeah always coming out in the United States too now, nowadays I'm pretty sure Japan gets a lot of RPGs that we don't yeah J- Japan really I mean they pretty much get everything which is it's irritating and uh, we, I mean, every once in a while they'll throw us a bone and go, here, here's your RPG, have fun. Yeah, and it's like, well, they're going to release the new uh, Yakuza over here. But it's, it's like, it's been out over there. And, uh... Yeah, and they don't even, like, even series that do okay over here, like Yakuza, they don't always release all of the games and no. it's for it. And it's fucking irritating. Because that's a great fucking fair franchise. And I've it, it honestly really, never played it. Oh, it's so fun. It has a really strong cult following over here. It's kind of a mix of... Uh, oh, God. It's it like reminds a, me a lot of GTA. It's like a mix of Shinmu, GTA, and it, uh, like a brawler at the same time. That sounds awesome. It really is. It's a great... Didn't that really start on the PlayStation 2 as well? I believe so, yeah. God, that system was so great. I love, like, oh, one thing I didn't think of that I don't think many people even did this back in the day, but I think it was also the first video game console where you could hook the audio up through digital optical, and you got yeah. better audio by doing that. Yeah, it was. I remember hooking that up. And for the very first time hooking that up, my audio up through that on the PlayStation 2, and I was playing Resident Evil 4. And you remember the castle section of it had the running fountain in it. Yeah. And I would just sit there in my room and I would turn Leon in circles because I could hear the fountain move from one speaker to the next and then right. it would move back behind me because it had these it was working through the surround sound. And I was like, Oh god, this is so cool. I could just turn Leon away from the fountain and hear it in the back speakers. <laughs> so good. So good. 
and it seems like a dorky because it's commonplace now, but back then it was a big deal. Yeah. I'm gonna run. I want to go over some of the. I, I pulled up the list of the best-selling PS2 games. So I'll go down the list for a little bit. I'm not gonna read it all. It'll take fucking forever. But there's one I see on here that's a little bit down the list that I want to mention. It's the Getaway. You remember how fucking great those two games were? I've never played the Getaway. You didn't. Oh my god, dude. Both of them were so fun. It was like playing a Guy Ritchie movie. I was obsessed with those fucking games. I heard they were good. I just never got around to playing them. Yeah. Oh, my God. You, if you ever get a chance, because I know you said, you're, you said your Slim still works, right? Yeah. If you, if you get a chance to pick up Getaway 1 or 2, get it. They're, they're great. So fun. But, um, so, I'm going to start. So, number one, best-selling PS2 games. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, followed by... Grand Theft Auto Vice City, then Gran Turismo 3, Grand I played Theft the shit Auto, out of GTA yeah. 3. Yeah, me too. Or GT3. Grand Theft Auto 3, Gran Turismo 4, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, uh. Final, Final Fantasy 10, Tekken mm-hmm. 5, Final Fantasy 9, Kingdom Hearts, fantastic game, God of War, Dragon Quest 8, Journey of the Cursed King. This is irritating because now, like you, you can what really want to get them on the 3DS, which is a shame because God, Dragon Quest Eight was so fucking good. Yeah, Jesus Christ. And then Madden, God of War Two, Jack and Dexter, Final Fantasy Ten Two, I Toy Play, four million units. On this really? Yeah. I wouldn't have expected that. Madden NFL 04, Kingdom Hearts Two. And Madden 06, Ratchet and Clank, and then Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Hmm, I would have guessed that Snake Eater would sell better. It, it le- or maybe that's just not combining Snake Eater and Subsistence, and maybe Snake Eater combined with Subsistence sold better than 2? But I, I would have yeah. thought it sold better than 2. Yeah, no, I. 3.7 million and then two is at uh seven so consider damn more. yeah a lot more actually dude. which is also funny as you take seven million and you go to grand theft auto san andreas 27.5 million which is unfucking real yeah that is like that's like call of duty sales yeah, nowadays the, the grand uh, grand theft auto 5 is still one of and sometimes it's the top selling game of the month it's it's crazy but uh yeah those are like those are a decent little chunk of the top it's a good like it's a good look into the ps2 window because you got big exclusive like grand theft auto and grand turismo god of war but then to have you know dragon quest jack and daxter ratchet and clank kingdom hearts i mean kind of throwing these these franchises in there that you know, they were taking a chance on when they released them. Yeah, well, Kingdom Hearts was a big risk. Like, yeah, I remember people scoffing at the idea when they first started, like, Final Fantasy and Disney? Really? <laughs> you know? Yeah, but it, oh, it, it worked. And then in the year 3047, when Kingdom Hearts 3, three or 4 actually does come out, you know, it, it'll probably sell a lot. Yeah. Probably it's bad. It's yeah. got years, and I wonder if people are going to be disappointed with it just because they've been waiting for it for so long. Because a lot of times it works that way. You get yourself so hyped up for a video game that there's no way in hell it's ever going to live up to your expectations. That's kind of where that's where I'm at with Final Fantasy 15. Is I'm so excited that I'm like I'm trying to curb my excitement a little bit just because like. I don't know 100% how it's going to be. Like, I'm really fucking excited, but if I'm let down... And I think even being a little bit disappointed will equal me being really disappointed. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. Cause I've been waiting so long. It's like, I'm so ready. I'm so fucking ready for a brand new Final Fantasy. Everything I've read and seen, I think looks awesome. But if it doesn't live up to the hype, I will be just mortified and crushed. I, I'll be so fucking disappointed. I'm a little bit surprised that Final Fantasy XII didn't make that list. Like, 10-2, yeah. with how much bitching people did about that, made the list, and 12 did didn't? Well, 10-2, I mean, it, it just kind of it had that built-in, oh, it's a sequel, you know, and I 
I think that um, it had a built-in fan base from ten. Yeah, and I think I I'm, I think that ten gets a bad rap. To be honest, I, I thought it was fantastic. I mean, maybe not fantastic, but it was a really good game. There are things about ten that I don't like, and there are things about it that I fucking love. Yeah. I don't like that the entire thing is kind of linear. I mean, it's not as linear as 13, thank fucking God, but it's still fairly linear to go from point A to point B, point C, point yeah. D. But it's got more likable characters than 13 by having any likable characters at all because, God, I hate 13. <laughs> I don't... Oh, yeah, I didn't... I... My least favorite protagonist, Lightning, was such a bland character. She was. She was boring. The only thing that she did that I really liked was she punched Snow in the face, because I hate Snow. I think, I really think that Final Fantasy should maybe adopt a create a create your character, you know? Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Um, I think they could do it, just... It could be easy, and then you could just kind of mold it in how like you want more of a classic looking Final Fantasy character with the, the Goku spikes on their head, or you want yeah. You know, it, I, I think that they it, it would be a big thing for them. I think it'd be a really good idea, but I, I think uh, what's the name of Noctis or whatever his name is. Yeah, I think he looks pretty cool. I love goddamn that car. Did you see the fucking thing where it flies around? Jesus Christ! Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh-huh. God damn it, I can't wait. But, um, yeah, yeah sorry to side sidetrack a little bit, but yeah, the, um, and Ten sold very well on PS2, which is just a testament to how strong that franchise is. Um, uh, I actually like 12 better than I like 10, and I think I'm like the only person in the world that did. Oh, God, well, who was. I'm trying to picture 12. 12 was a, uh, had a huge in- emphasis on exploration. It had, um, the, you played as, well, he wasn't really the main character, but he was pushed as the main character. You played as Van, who really didn't have much to do oh, with the story right. yeah. after you the first what? 10 mi- hours. You know what? You're, you're right. That, it was a better game. The, the setting and the characters it was better. I, although I did think Blitz Ball was like an honestly part. That's the thing. And that's not a diss on 10 at all. I just prefer 12. And the, it had a uh, full, gorgeous, orchestrated soundtrack to it. Yeah. And, oh my god, the theme of the Empire was so fucking good in that game. And, the dialogue is the best the series has ever had by far. Um, it was directed by the same guy. Well, he was there for most of it. Yasumi Matsuno, who did um, uh, Vagrant Story on the PlayStation 1. Yeah. And he did Final Fantasy Tactics on the PlayStation 1. My... My favorite character in that game was Balthier. Is that how you pronounce it? He was bad. He was basically a more British version of uh, uh, Han Solo. Yeah, he was a fantasy <laughs> Han Solo. He was like the sky pirate. Oh my god, he was awesome. He was cool as shit. And then he had, uh, what was her name? The chick that always followed him around that was hot as fuck, the spider bunny ears. Uh, Fran. was her name yeah she was cool too um Bosch was pretty cool and Ash was pretty cool I think they stuck Van in there largely because the game really didn't have a main character cause it it's it like six, they were kind of like five or six main characters yeah, it was really more event driven than story driven. Van was uh, one of the better main. I mean, he was one of the better ones that they've had in a little while. Well, he wasn't like this whiny, bitchy, pansy ass, whatever. 
uh, he actually had a personality unlike Lightning. Yeah, yeah, he was a, he was a cool character, and and then the supporting cast was so good. The setting was really cool too. Yeah, the the setting was kind of already established a little bit because it's take pl- it takes place in the same world as final as the Final yeah. Fantasy Tactics game. It's the Ivories, Ivories. Yeah, Ivories. Which was, was it's cool to revisit a world and see it with a fresh new paint job. But oh, that game is getting a HD boost for the PlayStation Four, which I'm really excited for. Yeah, I'm so excited that like I may cry when I'm holding it, my grubby little paws. Yeah, I cannot wait for that because I just exploring that world alone was so much fun. I know. I'm hoping that they're gonna. I'm hoping they're really putting uh, time into it to make it something special. Yeah, I thought they did a good job with the uh, HD version of uh, Ten for the PlayStation Three and Four. And it's, it doesn't come out until 2017. It's called what? Uh, it's called the Zodiac Age. Yeah. And then I remember, wasn't there was a sequel that came out on the DS? Yeah, there was. Uh, I never played it, but there was. And oh god, what was it called? Uh, Rev. Revenant. Re- yeah. Yeah. Did you ever play that? No, I wanted to, but I never got to. It was. Uh, it was a different gameplay style. If I remember, it was like an art. It was like an RTS type of game, yeah, or something was- like that. I, don't, I know I, I remember reading about it but I, yeah I, I never got to play it like you say I never got to play it either and god we've probably been recording for an hour fucking PlayStation 2 at this point and we could probably talk for another hour because the system is so great and there's so many good games for it that we haven't even brought up oh uh, yeah I mean so many so many franchises got their start it was the last of the Crash Bandicoot games on there until you know hopefully Crash is brought back I know with the remasters so yeah they're doing remasters of one, remasters of one two and three for but, the uh, PlayStation 4 yeah you had you had Crash Ratchet Jack and Dex like, Sly Cooper Sly Cooper there were so many different types of games for the PS2 I mean it was just a fucking like it was it was like a, a video game buffet. I mean every style of game that you want to play was on that system. If you wanted Japanese role playing games with like she man characters and you didn't know what gender they were, that was your fucking system. If you wanted shooters, that was your system. If you wanted sports, that was your system. Fighting games, you know, platform games. It, it was unfucking real. How, just how many different styles of games were on it. Yeah. I think people tend to forget that the PlayStation 2 did have some really sweet first-person shooters on it uh, because it kind of got all got outshined by Halo. Yeah, I mean, Halo kind of reinvented things to a, to a degree. But it had uh, Red Faction. The first Red Faction was awesome. Great game. Great game. I, yeah. I've heard the second one's disappointing, but the first one's awesome. The first one's great. Um, uh, it had, uh... I mean, Call of Duty? Yeah, Call of Duty was good back then. Like, it had Call of Duty 2, the big red one, was awesome. Um... Were the Brothers in Arms series on the PS2? I don't know. I know they were on the Xbox. I don't know about the PS2, but... It had, uh... What was the huge Medal of Honor? Frontline. Medal of Honor Frontline. So good. Oh, God, that game was so great. Um... It had. I'm trying to remember some of the other. Um, it had Project Snowblind that wasn't that bad. I remember people making a big deal out of black on it. Yeah, and uh, Time Splitters was fun. Yeah, Time Splitters was awesome. Um, yeah, it's a lot of good shooters, you know. A lot of overlooked shoes, largely because none of them were Halo. <laughs> Yeah, Halo took over when it came out. I mean, but yeah, it was like I mean, it was just so you could play whatever the fuck you wanted. It was so 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 dense with what type of games they had. If if there's any type of game, like 
check a game that you particularly enjoy, and the PlayStation 2 will have a bunch of it. Yeah. Because yeah, the library yeah. was huge and just crammed, packed yeah. with like, awesome games. If you look back at a list of, like, some of the games just on that system, it's like, holy fuck, you almost forget just how many were on it. Yeah, and it would pro- I would probably rank it number three on my greatest systems of all time list. Behind the original PlayStation, which nostalgia plays big into that. I realize that a lot of those games, such as first-person shooters, got better on the PlayStation 2 and the Super Nintendo. I think my, oh man, my top three is, uh, oh fuck. It's tough, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's, it's, uh, GameCube, PS2, and then the third one is very difficult to say. I, I, you know, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Dreamcast, I thought was awesome. PS3 was great. It's so fucking hard to say. We should do a podcast remembering the Dreamcast sometime. Oh, I'd love to do like a Sega specific one. Yeah, the the one unfortunate thing with that is I've never owned a Saturn. I didn't. I didn't either. I, I knew somebody who did. And I, I played it. I thought it was great, but but I could talk plenty of Genesis. Oh yeah. Oh fuck. The Genesis was great. Yeah. Those those are you know the, the GameCube, the PS2, and then probably Super Nintendo. Or you know what? I'm sorry. The GameCube, the PS2, and the N64 were my top three. I love the N64, still hate the controller. Yeah, it was like a, um, a cartoon batarang, but... Yeah. It, it, was like, it was a controller that had a dick on it, which is weird. <laughs> yeah, it was weird, and I, I, I'll i never like that controller, and even though I use the crap out of it. Anyone who's ever got mad enough to smash one of those controllers to pieces like I have would remember that there was cardboard inside of it behind the buttons which I always thought like when I fucking smashed that thing and I found pieces of cardboard I'm like god damn Nintendo you cheap motherfucker yeah that, I didn't know that yeah yeah I was, it, it took me I I took it by the cord and I fucking just Popeye smashed that thing off the ground about 35 times because I was playing a, a WWF game and I, I there was a you had to play this you know to beat the story part of the story you had to do this cage match where you had to fight Kane mm-hmm. and I was I had, I had my wrestler and, and uh, I would I would do my special move to him and I remember I played this match for like forty five fucking minutes I'm not exaggerating at all just beating his fucking ass over and over and over again and I had been practicing I all I wanted to do was win this match like. So 45 fucking minutes out of my day, and I'm kicking his ass, I'm doing my finishing move to him, and then I start climbing up the cage to win my crowning achievement so far in my entire life. And, like, my hands were sweaty on the controller, I'm shaking in my seat. And then he just fucking sits up and runs over and shakes the cage, and I fall down, and he just climbs over it like I hadn't been whooping his ass for the past 45 minutes. And let me fucking tell you something that was too much to handle because the rage took over at that point yeah and it was like a fucking Tasmanian devil swinging that controller around in that house and just repeatedly smashing all and and I must say to their credit that fucking thing was hard to smash open Mm. that was one heavy ass controller holy shit yeah Oh man, we've been talking for way too goddamn long. I think we need to close out this podcast. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. It's such a great, so, so many memories. Like maybe, I mean, probably the most game memories that that I can remember are with that system because there were so many games for it. Yeah, probably me, mine as well. And it was such an amazing system. And thank you, Sony, for making it. Y- you made one of the best systems and gave me some of the best times in my entire life and I can't say enough about how much I love it oh yeah it's so good so there will never be another console like it yeah the, the days of consoles that are that good are probably just behind us period 
yeah, which is kind of a shame. It'll never be like that again, unfortunately. It, it, it really fucking knocked it out of the park. Yep, and it was, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> It was an amazing system. I loved it. Thank you, everybody, for joining in, for us talking 15, for an hour or whatever, of PlayStation 2, 15 years of PlayStation 2, closing in on 16. It was one of the best systems of all time, and I absolutely love it, and um, Eric does too. So it was fun to sit and talk about it, reminisce discuss all the in- innovative things that it did and how it pushed DVDs out the door big time and how it got a DVD player into 150 million homes. Yep. So thank you everybody for listening. We'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks everybody and goodbye.